Hey everybody, Brandon Bliso here. I just paid cash for a brand new Honda Pilot 2017 Touring car for my wife and her Christmas present. She's very, very happy. Short story I want to tell you. Very first car I owned was a 1968 Dodge Dart that my father sold me. Couldn't give it to me. He sold it to me for, I think, $600 or $800. Now, I know you hear the resenting tone in my voice, but I'm here to tell you, I am so grateful my father sold me that car because I valued it a lot. And now today I walk into the dealership and I give him $48,000 in cash. And the car is mine without any interest. But what this post is really, 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 really about for me um, is that I'm just so grateful, you know. I love to give. Giving to me is probably one of the most amazing things that we're all blessed with. And he asked me today, the salesman, are you going to trade in your car? I said, no, I'm not. They go, why? I said, because I'm going to give my Highlander to my sister, Michelle. And then I'm going to keep the Lexus for myself. And I bought my wife a new car. Now, that's what I'm talking about, you know. I love to give. I just do. And it's just such a great feeling to be able to give my sister a car because she needs one, to be able to buy my wife a new car because she deserves it. And, you know, I'm a simple guy. Somebody laughed at me about that. I think I have like, I don't know, four or five pairs of the same Converse. I always wear the same outfit because I don't like to think about clothes. I'm not a slave to fashion. None of that appeals to me. I like to create, I like to think, I like to cultivate, I like to, I like to grow, I like to make a difference. I want to give, I want to give. So that brings me to my salesman suck story. Because I got to share that with you, okay? Salesmen suck. Wow, there's so many people on already. Okay, salesmen suck. Did I say that loud? Who wants to say it with me on the count of three? Salesmen suck. And that's why I refuse to do it in my business. I refuse to do it in my business. So this is how this whole thing transpired. My past week-long odyssey with salesmen. Okay? I'll give it to you. So, of course, like a prudent, like a prudent um, car buyer, I went to cars.com. I went to Kelly Blue Book. I went to Edmund. I went to Cartelligence. Um... You know, there's not a big markup on a brand new car. It is what it is. And, you know, there's a little play for $1,000 here and there. Not a lot. So there's the dealer invoice, right, which I make a little bit often. And then there's the MSRP. And normally on a brand new car like this one, right, that's fully loaded, top of the line Honda Pilot touring for this model, um, there's only so much wiggle room. So I knew what the dealer invoice was. I knew what the MSRP was. So I'm talking to this dealership. And I'm going to call them out um, because I think their practices were really poor. And I know they're saying, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to leave them alone. Should I? What do you guys want to know? Well, if you live out here by me, stay away from the Honda dealership in San Bruno. Honda in San Bruno. So I start talking to the guy via the internet. I know what basically this guy's saying $500 off MSRP. Uh, the GM at this Honda in San Bruno said 1000 Then once I started doing my internet and car diligence and Edmund, I got a little deeper. A salesman at the same place, the San Bruno Honda, said, I will give it to you for $1,500 off MSRP. So I said, good. So I, you know, of course I sent that to the Honda in Stockton, the Honda in Livermore, the different Honda. They go, well, that's a great deal. I'll give you $500 and that's the best I'm going to do. The car won't be available until January. And, you know, I know they do that song and dance too. But a couple guys held really strong on their point. So, Sunday night, we go in there. 
And I'm thinking, great, $1,500 off, that's a good deal. I'm going to basically get $500 more than anybody else is willing to offer me. Everybody across the board was about $1,000 MSRP. So this guy's coming in at 15. I thought that was honest, right on. So my wife test drives the car on a Sunday night. <coughs> she loved it, of course, right? She digs it, it's fabulous and all that good stuff. And then it was about nine o'clock, kids were hungry, they were closing. I said, okay, I'll talk it over to my wife. You're not gonna sell this car by tomorrow morning. Get back to me in the morning and we'll do the deal if it's gonna happen. So next morning, I call him up and he goes, my general manager won't let me give it to you for that price. And I said, what? What are you talking about? I have an email that says, I will honor the word honor. I will honor, I will honor, I will honor this price. So I, I was not happy. He said, well, why don't you come in? Don't bring a cashier's check and you can talk to the GM. So I go and I think this GM was bummed out because I got $500 than the $1,000 he offered me. But let me tell you about that experience. He was referred to me by somebody else. So I walked in, I told him who I was and who I knew and who he knew mutually. And he said, okay, I'll give you $1,000 off the MSRP. And so I said, oh, okay, we'll start there. And then, you know, so the first law was, he's gonna sit and make me wait. I don't know why salesmen do that. They think if they make you wait, you're gonna get hungry, you're gonna get disillusioned, you're gonna just get disoriented. I don't know what the gig is with that. So I waited for 30 minutes and this guy looked like he was talking to everybody and just doing his thing. And then he comes back, well, I got one for you, but there's only four of them in the state of California and we have to act now. So number one, salesmanship 101. 101, the law of scarcity. The law of scarcity, right? The law of scarcity. And I looked at this guy and I just wanna say I'm not stupid. I hate when salesmen treat you like you're stupid. And I just said to him, I said, sir, I was on the internet and I've looked and there's, there's plenty of these Honda Pilot tourings throughout California. He goes, no, there's not. You must be looking at a different list. I said, sir, cars.com, edmund.com, car intelligence, Kelly Blue Book. Now, there's actually quite a few out there. And he goes, well, my printout, see my printout? And he shows me this printout with four cars on it. Okay, okay. So that was the second thing that already bothered me about this dealership. And then when they follow up with, well, you know, now that they knew my wife loved the car, they figured they're gonna come back me and hardball me and get that extra $500 that got me to walk in there to begin with, right? Because everybody was, was about $1,000 off MSRP. Some wouldn't budge, some said only 500, so I knew what I was playing with, right? I was right in the ballpark. So they figured that, that they could probably do 1,000 like everybody else and they'll make a, a little bit more and they're good with it. So I go in there and I talk to this general manager and he goes, well, I can't do that for you. I said, sir, your salesman and your manager on Sunday night told me they would honor this price. I have it in an email, written email, saying they would honor this price. Well, if he had sold you the car, I would have fired him. I said, really? Well, you save firing this guy and you're gonna do the right thing by me. How's that sound? He says, no, I can't do that. I said, well, sir, then you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for your time. And I walked out. And so the interim is salesman's trying to talk to him. And I, I know what they're doing, right? I know what's going on here. And I finally said, I'll tell you what, if you don't give me the price that you offered me, you know, which is the right thing to do, I'm gonna to go to the general attorney, I'm gonna to go to the Better Business Bureau, and I'm gonna to go to uh, Seven on Your Side, which is a TV program that exposes scam artists like this. And then as I began to look at this auto dealership at Yelp and different places, they do this all the time. They give you one price, they get you in there, you get buttered up, you love the car, then he says, my general manager says, I can't do that price. So I found out this behavior that they exhibit is something that they've done before, okay? So I wait for today to see if he's gonna to respond to my threat. And I'm not big on threats. I'm really of the school of thought to just walk. Just walk away from you. And I feel that way in, in my business. I like to be transparent. I like to be honest. There is no salesmanship. There is no smoke and mirrors. There is no sleight of hand. What you see is what you get. You're an intelligent consumer. Make your choice, right? I feel very strongly about that. That's when I hear these stories of, don't let them leave your school without some kind of money. You know, if they're not ready to make a decision to sign a contract, then say, I'll tell you what, write me a check for the uniforms. Here's the uniforms. And if you decide you don't want to do it, bring the uniforms back. I'll rip up the check, right? You don't want them to leave there without some type of financial commitment. 
Oh, that sucks. Say it again. Salesmen suck. So I waited this morning thinking this San Bruno Honda is going to call me back and, you know, maybe give in to my idle threats and, and act upon it. Well, guess what? They didn't at 9 a.m. when they opened up. So I said, okay, 9 a.m. During that time, I went to the Lexus dealership and I got the brakes done on my wife's old car, which is now going to be my car. This Highlander I've given to my sister. Sister Michelle, this is yours. This is yours. So then I'm at the Lexus dealership and I'm looking at my different Edmunds price guarantee.com. I'm looking, looking, I go, okay, the one at Ceremony was $500 more than this guy over here. $500 more. But at the end of the day, like I was telling the salesman yesterday, it's not about $500. It's about doing the right thing. It's about integrity. It is. It is. That's why I wrote that, 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 that small little statement today at, at my Facebook, our private group page. It's time. And I said, the quality of my life is based upon the quality of my behavior. If I act with poor character, I will have a poor life. If I act with rich character, I will have a wealthy life. I believe that. I really, really do. I really, really do. So, I figured, okay, it's 500 bucks, right? It was a matter of principle because I said to these guys yesterday, you know, I told the salesman, it's not that I can't afford your extra 500 bucks that you're now trying to milk for me. This is about principle. I want to know when I bring my car to you for servicing and you tell me these brakes need to be done, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to believe you because that's where the real money is made on these brand new cars, is on the servicing if you get it serviced there for 10 years. Anybody knows that. I've had all my cars serviced at the dealerships, okay, for the past decade or so. Now remember, I was the guy who drove the 68 Dodge Dart that was a little hoopty, that, that was really jacked up. Okay, so I walked into the Honda dealer in Ceremony and I was given the internet manager. I showed him the pricing. He said, great, this is for a two-wheel drive. I said, yes, I know that. And the all-wheel drive is about 44K. He says, yes, it is. That's the MSRP. Everybody said that across the board. Edmonds, non-dealers, everybody out there said about 44K across the board. Great. The guy at San Bruno said he'd give me $1,500 off. Can you do that? He goes, no, the best I can do is four, is a thousand. I said, are you sure? He goes, yes, sir. And he was very nice, very kind, older gentleman, he had all these awards for salesman this and salesman that. And, you know, I looked at his Yelp reviews and they were really, really good. Joe E. Public. So this guy's good. And I trusted him. Nice guy. You know, we had a good conversation and I said, okay, let's do it. Because I knew in the ballpark what I should be paying. I was very clear about that. So I took the thousand dollars. I ate five hundred. I could have gained five hundred dollars more at the other dealership, right? Because here's what happened. Like I knew it was going to happen. You know, about twelve o'clock because they're trying to make me sweat it during the day, right? They want me to sweat it, sweat it out. Wow, these guys aren't going to budge. I better take their their thousand dollars, you know, and run. So about one o'clock, I get. Oh, okay. My manager gave in, and we can you know give you your fifteen hundred dollars off. And I told them, sorry, I already bought a car. And he said, okay, congratulations. But you see where I'm going with that? The short-sightedness of the whole salesman to be blinded by salesman tactic, to be so fixated on closing the deal and squeezing this much more out of me, you know, for 500 measly dollars, this guy lost the whole car sale and I'm gonna service it at the other Honda dealership, which I actually like so much better. So, so, so much better. When I was in this other Honda dealership, it smelled of marijuana. I couldn't believe it. The freaking service guy standing there looking at the TV and it smells of marijuana. I, I couldn't believe it, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So, the story of the tale is, salesmen suck. Please, if you are a salesman, stop it. Focus on serving people. Focus on doing the right thing. The right thing. Focus on doing the right thing. You know, and be as transparent as you can in every shape, way, and form. And the wonderful thing was, this guy sat there and he says, you know, you're going to get a survey if you think I served you well. Please, will you let them know that? And I said, absolutely, sir. It was painless. It was easy. When you told me this was the best deal you could give me, I felt a sense of honesty about you. And, and as he said, it's a brand new car. There's not a lot of money in it. 
the, the, you know, the money I learned. He didn't say this. The real profit comes from servicing. And if I'm going to trust you on the price to begin with, I'm going to trust you on the first date, I'm more likely to go on a second date. I will happily bring our car back there at 5,000 miles so they can do the oil and blah, 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 blah. Happily, with a big smile on my face. You know why? Because I believe they did the right thing by me. It wasn't about budging in price. It wasn't about finagling. This is a new car. This is dealer. This is MSRP. We met in the middle. I get that. The MSRP on a brand new car isn't marked up very high. I get that. I know that. It's because I've got, I've spent, I've been at every website. And that was the other thing was, you know, I tried to tell the other dealership, I did my homework. I, I believe knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you go with coming in, the better. I almost went with a broker, so I didn't have to talk to these guys, because they are. They are a bizarre breed. They're a bizarre breed, man, because they're fixated on what? Quotas, quotas, gotta make my quota. My quota is 10 cars. If I don't get 10 cars, you know, management's gonna be pissed at me. I gotta make my quota, I gotta make my quota. Quota, everything's about making a quota. It doesn't take in the je It doesn't take in the human factor. The human factor, this is a human being, and for us, you know, it's day in and day out we see these people, twice a week, sometimes three, four times a week. So I think investing in the relationship from the beginning, a relationship of trust, a relationship of transparency and honesty and giving people a great price for your service, but a fair price for your service. You feel me? I mean, we're not the cheapest school on the block, but I promise you the service we offer you is going to be amazing. Amazing, amazing. I promise you that. And people know that coming in. So I learned a lot today. I really, really did. You know, through this whole process, it just reminds me why I created the business model of service without contracts, upgrades, belt fees, enrollment fees, and why we focus on that accountability and that ownership of, of holding it at the highest level and why we take such pride in that. We take a lot of pride in that. You know, I believe if I suck, you shouldn't pay me anything. So why lock you into a contract, you know? And the fact that I, I bought the car with cash, of course, they're not gonna make as much money either, right? They're not gonna make as much money either because they're not getting the financing. If I finance it through them, that the kickback they would get from the finance company, right? So there's a lot of variables that went into this, but I really, really learned a lot. And it just reminded me more and more and more why it makes me so, so sad when people will use the word used car salesman when they associate with any martial arts school out there in a Google review, in a Yelp review. And if you ever have a review like that, you really should go back and look at your practices. Really, really go back, look at every practice in your business and ask yourself, do I want to be a part of this? Do I want to be a part of this? Where they're going to associate what I love so much, which is the martial arts, and associate it with car salesmen. You feel me? All right, so I also want to announce um, 2017 for me is starting to book up. I will be in Cozumel, Mexico, March 3rd and 4th at the President Summit. Uh, Cause Talks, a lot of great people. John Broussard, Melody Schumann, John Cassidy, Greg Horton. I mean, these guys are multimillionaires. These people know their business. Melody Schumann's a leading expert in, in child development and curriculum for kids. I'll be there speaking. It's going to be an amazing event. And they're actually, if you look at the link in my Facebook page, they are giving away an all-expense paid trip, I believe, to this event. It's a contest. Then I'll also be, the following week, I'll be in Dallas, Texas for the Kama Korean and American Martial Arts Association event. I'll be speaking out there as well. And a lot of these, these school owners own their property. A lot of these school owners are multi-school owners, multi-millionaires, and they run under the radar. They're stealth well. You won't see them speaking at a lot of events. They keep to themselves. Kama is their event. You know, there is a lot of Korean Taekwondo school owners, and we can learn a lot from them. You know, I, I, I love just this feeling of the fathers and the sons and the daughters running the schools together, and it's, it's a wonderful place to be. So those are the two events I got booked so far this year. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted. And tell me again, say it again, everybody, salesmen suck.